What's up guys, my name is Amanda. My name is Emily. Welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. Today, Today, we have something super cool and special and unique for you. We have another ladies fish camp. This is our second ladies fish camp, another two full day event. And we are going to take you with us along the first day, the first full day of our ladies only fishing camp. First thing we did at this camp, the weather was way better. It was way better. beautiful weather. So we were able to do some different fishing. Our first thing we did in the morning was we went and we found the pinfish. The pilchards. And the pinfish. We found pilchards and pinfish. Yes, yeah, so we went, first we found the pilchards and we demonstrated for the girls how to throw a cast net so that later they could learn to throw it themselves. And then we also went and pulled our pinfish traps. Yeah, and then they're, they're called pinfish because they have spines on, if you look, I'll show you you can see that they're pretty spiny. So these are our pinfish. This is a pretty good size one, he's kind of small. We'll put them in the well. So this is a small mangrove snapper. You guys see that? We catch small snappers. And the bigger ones we'll catch on the reef, so we'll probably catch them today. So these are the smaller pinfish. These are nice sized ones. So if you, if you have the trap that you can control the size, that would be the benefit to making sure you get most of them this size. But the downside to that would be if you only had if the holes were too small for small ones and there weren't any small ones around, then you might not catch any. So it's kind of like, you're gonna have to experiment. Because this was the first day, we had the ladies watching us catch the bait so that they could observe because the plan is to teach them in the afternoon so that way the next day they could throw it themselves. However, they did a really great job at helping out because once we catch those pinfish in the in the net, it's really important to get them oh, in the, the live pinfish, well. See? The pinfish, the pelters. Guys, we, we, call this, we call this fish brain. When we get our words all mixed We've fished up. for two days straight, so we're exhausted. Everything's just once we get the pilchards, the pilchards in, the net, in the net. The ladies helped drastically because, unfortunately, because of COVID, you can't find any quarter-inch nets. We only had three eighths inch nets, so our pinfish were getting stuck in the nets. <laughs> so the ladies were running around helping shake it out and get the pilchards in the well. Yes. And then we also went and pulled pinfish traps. Nice, very cool. We want to hook this pilchard in the hard parts, and the belly is one of the hard parts, it's also the top of the head. So what we'll do, I'll just show you the first time. We're just gonna go through the belly where the fins are. So that way when you do cast your bait, he doesn't fly off. Okay. Just like that. 
and then we're gonna put him in the water and cast him out towards all the yellow tails. And then what you're gonna wanna do, because he's a live bait, he's gonna kinda do like the job for you, so you can hold your rod and reel. And then you're gonna kind of hold the line and at, he's gonna swim away from you. So as he swims away, you're gonna let him swim away. And then when a fish comes to eat it, he's gonna attack it and you're gonna know you're gonna feel it. Okay. And then you're gonna give it three to five seconds of letting him eat the line and then you'll close your bail and reel. Small? Keep reeling. He might be on, I might be small. Nice. So that's a mangrove snapper. And he's gonna be too small. They just have sharp spines and gill plates. That's why I like to use a rag. But with jigs, once you get in the pliers, you can kind of push down and twist. If so I push down and twist, and that should get the jig out. Yep. There you go. And he's too small. You're gonna let him have it for three to five seconds, and then you're gonna close your bail and like reel and real quick. Because reel, reel. You gotta fish on. That was so fast. <laughs> nice job. Perfect. And then just swing him into the boat this way. There you go. And then open your bail. Nice job. That was good. And then shake it. Perfect. Now shake it. Keep going. You're almost there. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I know I'm left-handed. Is anybody else left-handed here? No. All right, it's the same techniques, but the first thing I like to do is go on an angle from the head down to the belly, and then up at the head, I like to outline my fish. You turn the knife and you outline where the meat is off the backbone. Do you guys see that? And then when I get to this part, I like to poke the knife through and get the meat on the tail. And then a couple options, you could do that to both sides first, or you can get the meat off of one side completely and then switch to the other side. The benefit to doing outlining both sides before you get the meat off is like if the meat wasn't on this side, then this fish would be like, there wouldn't be anything supporting the fish. And then we basically just find the backbone and we, ca we just carve our knife down the backbone. And then when we get to this side, and do the same thing, then just cut through it. And yellowtails have soft rib cages, so you can pretty easily get through them. So that's one side. We get the meat off, and then if you guys want your fillets to sink, make sure the stomach's already broken, but you break the back and you poke the eyeballs. If not, they'll float down the canal, and you'll be that. They'll be like, whose fish is that floating down the canal with a bunch of flies on it? <laughs> it's have, I've had, I've had have, me and my neighbors have been like, were you filleting this fish? And then to get the skin off, what we do is I start at the tail side and I cut through the meat, but not through the skin. And then I turn my knife and you want to make as few slices as possible. It's kind of more like a push, not so much slicing. And then the skins we can throw. Okay, so the landing on the motor. <laughs> and then we have the belly here that we just cut at an angle. And then the last thing is the pin bones, which is like, it, you can literally feel them. They're bones that I guess are like pins. And you just kind of go on a little V cut. Right there. I was super excited to get back to the dock because the first thing we did was we took my ladies and we took them to the grass field and I taught them cast net throwing. And what we did is we had them learn on six and seven foot nets. It's a really great place to start learning to throw a cast net. We don't need to learn with 10 foot nets. We have them learn with six and seven foot nets and I teach them how to do it the same way that I would throw a 10 foot minus a step. Exactly. Does that make sense? It makes sense. So basically the way we teach them is we teach them in a way where they can take that method of throwing the net and transition it into a large net. Which we did just make a video on how to throw a small six, seven or eight foot cast net, which is going to give you the building blocks to throw a 10 foot net. If you guys want to see these ladies do an awesome job at catching their own pilchards and going offshore and live baiting for blackfin tunas, make sure you subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Leave your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to follow Gale Force Twins on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube.